from Gearhead. So let's start blocking. This is where the teardrop block comes in handy. Instead of hitting this with a round block and then this with a square block, I use a teardrop and could go into the curve because it's round right here and I let my paper hang over a little bit. You see that? Like that works great. Remember, this only had one coat of filler and one coat of green. So we got two spots where there's a guide coat still remaining. And with the hand fill, I can determine that it could be blocked out. But I'm not going to sit here and concentrate on that area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to block everything out. And then I'm going to come back to this area. Block all this in one plane, and it gives the illusion that it's straight. I mean, it will be straight, but when you concentrate on one area, you'll create dips. But then there's other times where I'll rub my hand over it and it's too low, I don't have to fill it. But this can be blocked out, so not a problem. right in the area where I switched to a narrower block because there's a compound curve. Very slight. I might be able to go a little bit further with this one. This is kind of narrow where it's straight. So.
the quarter I did turned out pretty well. There's only a little piece of filler poking out right there. And up here, I had to spot fill these areas. And this is where I initially had that fear that the uh, quarter was going to walk. So it wasn't quite right there. That's why I have uh, two small pieces of spot filler. So now it feels nice and good. And the repair is undetectable. Next, you're going to do the firewall. And the firewall looks pretty decent, but uh, again, the lines really deceive you. So you see it in primer. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to throw tape right on the top and right on the top. Now with my finger, I'm going to spread filler into there. And that'll give me a nice sharp line, nice even line. Sighting down it with your grease and wax remover, reveal that this is a little wobbly. This little line going up to here and up here is a little wobbly. So you put filler on both sides and then finger a little more. So I touched up two more areas, right there and right there, and I'll sand that off. We'll have another look at it. It's starting to shape up. It's starting to look really good. So these tape edges leave a nice, sharp, and crisp line from here to there. So these are just two areas that I'm spotting in, and I'm sanding them with a the rolled up piece of 80 grit. I tried to use this sanding block, but it wasn't the right contour, but when I roll a piece of sandpaper up, it works nicely. So, let's get this sanded and see what it looks like. We got Jess putting in the fenders, the support, and the hood. OER fenders, supposedly they're a GM stamp, but they're made in Taiwan, so who knows, we'll see.
here's the 68 Charger. He just got epoxied and rhino blasted. It looks good. Looks good back here. And uh, now what we're going to do is unmask it. Mask up all the holes and mask the inside so we can prime the outside. And now we're ready to spray primer. When we get these cars from Gearhead, we always have to ensure that we mask the underside very well. Because, um, they always do up the underside before we get it, along with all the suspension and, and everything, so. And being that that's all done, we have to take our sweet time in masking, even if it's just for primer. So. Got this all done. I'm ready to roll. And, uh, here's a tip. When you're priming and painting, don't leave tape on the surface. And if you do, don't do it for too long because a roll of tape sat right there overnight. And as you can see, some of the adhesive goop transferred onto the surface. So it's not such a big deal if you're priming, but it is if you're painting, a real big deal. So what we're gonna do now is grease and wax that little area with grease and wax remover and uh, prime this baby and uh, check this out my side Brendan's side <laughs> that's actually the only thing he did we've been working on this thing the same amount of hours I did everything all that that, 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 and that. Got the charger back from the booth. Got some set and black in there. Got the uh, high build primer with guide coat on it. And uh, we're ready to rock. Looking good, looking good. Got Brandon on the charger for the final block in. Me, Brandon, and Jeff tag team this on the first locking. Here's the charger. So waiting for spot prime. And here's a little lesson on blocking. When you block and something starts poking out, you stop and you assess the situation. Right here, someone didn't assess the situation. When I originally blocked this with 180 the first round, something started poking out on me too. So I stopped right away and realized that this quarter is bowed right there and it's a natural bow. I went to the other side and checked the other side. What somebody did here was they kept sanding it and then blamed the uh, panel. And in the end, I got blamed for it because I blocked it the first time and didn't catch it. But I pointed out that uh, it's bowed right there. So and this kind of backs up my story right here. See that metal right there? And metal right there? Well, this door has like a valley right here. And so what they did here was sand this with a 10 inch block. And again, they kept sanding and not assessing the situation. So always use the right block or things like that will happen. Then you gotta reprime. Some of the parts for the charger are done. And they're looking smooth. Deck lid. And the hood. So the charger is all painted. And this thing is looking sweet. 
Oh man. This thing is awesome. I can't wait to take some pictures of this one. This is complete. There's still a couple parts that need to be painted. But uh, this thing is awesome.